Once again, the smell of fall is in the air, and I, for one, could not be more excited. Why? It's a time when low-angle light combines with deep blue skies, snow-covered peaks, vibrant trees, and wildlife on the move. In this video, I'll give a few tips and tricks to help folks new to fall photography get their best images yet. And for the experienced shooters, there's plenty of inspiring images to get you motivated to plan your next photo adventure. So here we go. Well, good morning, everyone. It is a beautiful day high in the Colorado Rockies. We're actually tucked up right underneath the Continental Divide as we speak here. Um, and uh, things are changing right now. It's an exciting time for outdoor photographers. The, the days are getting shorter and they're also getting quite a bit cooler. I even got my down jacket on this morning. It's a little brisk. Um, and of course the aspens are starting to change colors too. They're going from their summer greens to their autumn golds. Now today they're mostly, mostly green. There's not a lot of change today, but that's going to um, really change quickly here in the next week or so uh, as the gold, gold, orange, and red flecks start to uh, creep into the forest for sure. But it's not just the landscape photography that I'm excited about. I'm also excited about the wildlife photography. So this time of year is really good for wildlife photography. Uh, like I said, the days are cooler now, so we'll start seeing more and more animals coming out. Uh, and it's also the rut for most of the uh, animals that we'll be photographing this fall. So yeah, so we're gonna be shooting a lot of landscape and uh, wildlife as well. And I did want to talk to you guys a little bit about a few new gear acquisitions I got. Um, one is the Sigma 15600 DGDN. Now I did do an entire video dedicated to this lens uh, two, three weeks ago, uh, actually three, four weeks ago now. Um, so if you want to learn more about this lens, uh, you can check it out there. I will use the 15600 for wildlife, of course, but I will also use it for landscape. Um, I also got a new camera body. I have the Sony a7R4, which is a 61 megapixel camera. Um, and I, and I, you know, the reason I picked that camera up is because as I'm doing more landscape photography, I'm selling more prints and, you know, I want to have the ability to go bigger, uh, than, you know, 20 by 30 has kind of been my max print size thus far. And that 61 megapixels will allow me to go far beyond that 20 by 30 size. So those are my two new pieces of gear that I'll have with me. Um, of course, I'm also gonna have uh, all my other Sigma lenses. Uh, the 7200, I shoot that a ton for landscape. The 2470 is also one of my go-to lenses. Uh, the 100, 400, and the 1424. That kind of rounds out my uh, wildlife and landscape photo kit. Some other things for you guys to think about too. I'm going to give you two little, a uh, couple little pointers here uh, for your fall landscape photography that are going to help you out a bunch. Um, one is I highly recommend that you get a polarizing filter. Uh, I, this is about the only time of year that I'll use the polarizing filter, but it's really important, I think, uh, for your fall photography. It really increases the contrast very nicely in your images. It can darken the blue sky, don't over darken. Um, it really makes those white clouds pop and it also really saturates the colors in the aspen leaves. I don't know if you know this, but aspen leaves do have a bit of a waxy surface to them. So 
they can reflect light and have a bit of a sheen to them. So that polarizing filter will knock that reflected light down and give you a much richer, more, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, more saturated color. Another thing I want to talk about is setting up your camera correctly. Um, you know, be shooting in RAW, of course, and also use your lowest or your base ISO on your camera. For the Sony cameras, um, it is the base ISO is 100, so I'll put it at 100 and just keep it there for my entire landscape <laughs> shooting season, essentially. Um, and the reason you want to keep it at a low ISO is that one, you'll have the least amount of noise in your images, uh, and two, um, you get your best dynamic range. I don't know if a lot of people realize this, but as you crank up your ISO to 400, 800, 1600, 3200, you start losing uh, the dynamic range. So you bought this fancy camera to get the, um, you know, to get these great files out of it. And the way to do that is to use your lowest ISO. So if you're using a polarizing filter and a low ISO, that's gonna give you what? Some really slow shutter speeds. So the next piece of gear that I'm gonna tell you that's super important, and you probably have one already, but be sure to have a good sturdy tripod with you. Um, that's really important for, you know, you're gonna be at shutter speeds of a 50th of a second, a 30th, a 15th, maybe a half second or a second, and you will need that good steady tripod to get super sharp images. In addition to that, you could also get a cable release or use your two second timer, because even just the littlest hit of your hand on the camera will cause a little bit of camera shake and blur your images. So use your timer or use a cable release. That'll help you get the sharpest images possible. So let's talk a little bit about how to, or how I will approach um, my fall photography. You know, it starts way up in the highest elevations, which is where I am now, uh, up in Summit County in Colorado. And then it will, peak here kind of first and then slowly move down to the lower elevation. So I'll start around here, around my hometown, and then I'll probably move down towards the Crested Butte area. And then once that's past peak, probably move even a little bit further lower down towards uh, to uh, Uray, Ridgeway area and shoot that area. After that, I'll actually go all the way down into the deserts and shoot fall there because it's beautiful shooting in the fall. And as I'm sure everyone has noticed, um, it's just been busier out everywhere. The outdoors have been really busy, you know, the trailheads are busier, finding a camp spot is harder. Uh, and I don't think this fall is gonna be any different. It's gonna be a busy fall out there. So everyone be chill, be cool, make friends with your fellow photographers um, and just have fun. And of course, you know, I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but let's be sure to leave no trace. Let's be sure to take really good care of the lands that we're photographing. Anyhow, that's about it for me this morning. Um, I'm going to go cruise around and look for some wildlife to photograph, but uh, I hope to see you out there. Have a great time. Be safe. And uh, yeah, take care. <laughs>